Well, bless the Lord this morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. This is Pastor Sonny James. Hallelujah. I want to welcome all of those that are listening uh, by way of cellular devices, by way of home telephones, by way of the internet, wherever you might be right now. Uh, I am so excited that we are able to come together yet again another day and to see what the Lord has for us on this day. Amen. So I am so excited that um, this is one of my favorite days of the year, not just because uh, it's another day to celebrate and maybe get a slice of cake but which that might have something to do with it, amen. But I am excited because this is a day that I personally get to slow life down and acknowledge some of the people that have been most influential in my life, some of the people that God has used to really, really kind of revamp my thinking and kind of knock some sense into me when it was necessary. Amen. So uh, I want to start off by saying happy, 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 happy Mother's Day to everyone listening near or far, and happy Mother's Day to all of those that were not able to tune into this broadcast, but yet are celebrating in their own way. So I thank God for all mothers, and not just mothers that have given birth, but mother figures, because Lord knows a lot of us have had influences by a whole lot of people that didn't give birth to us. Can somebody testify to that? Amen? I know that I have. So I want to start off this morning, we want to start in prayer, and I'm going to ask um, if Sister Veronica... I keep wanting to say Veronica because I'm thinking about her constantly and praying for her. But Sister Victoria is, should be on the line with us, amen. And I'm going to ask her to open our service in prayer. And then followed by her will be my partner and wife, Sister Kirsten James, um, to begin our service celebration this morning. Amen. So if Sister Victoria, who I'm going to constantly call Veronica by way of accident, if she will open the airways of heaven and to invite Christ in, I'd be most grateful. This is Emily. Good morning. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Sister, is Sister Victoria's with us on the line? All right, good morning. Amen, good morning. I'm going to ask then that if Emily Stewart would, um, Mother Emily, if she would uh, open us in prayer this morning, I'd be most grateful. And followed by that will be Sister Kirsten James. Are we ready? Yes, ma'am. Lord, I come to you this morning as humbly as I can, asking God's grace upon all of us. Wrap your loving arms around us and protect us from all that's going on in this world today. I want to thank you for Letting us see another day that we can get it right. Yes, Jesus. Thank Help you. us to understand all that 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 was going to receive today. Yes. Watch over all of the sick and shut in. Protect the um, people that are taking care of us, the first responders. Yes, Lord. Let us love one another as the Lord loves us. Yeah. Lord, I ask all of this in Christ's name. Amen. 
In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Mother Emily, for that prayer. Bless the Lord. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Happy Mother's Day. Same to you. Happy Mother's Day. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, Coach. How are you? Thank you. Good morning. Good Happy Mother's Day to all you lovely mothers out there. I pray you've had a, a, Thank you. Thank you. a good morning good thus morning. far. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome again to uh, Keeper. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. So glad to hear you all joining us this morning. To God be the glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Is that Angela? It is. Hi, good morning, Angela. <laughs> Welcome back, Angela. Thank you. Glad to have you back. Amen. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. And again, happy Mother's Day. You all deserve such the best. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Sunny Renee. <laughs> Good morning. We mothers. We... I'm sorry. Oh, hi, Caitlin. Thank you. And Michael. Hi, Michael. Thank you. You take good care of Mama today, okay? Okay. <laughs> Amen. 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 <laughs> <laughs> I hope you all have, have had a, a blessed morning thus far. Um, today is a day to serve. I heard the Lord say serve today. And, um, you know, it. We mothers, we serve 24-7 all year round for years and years and years, and it never ends. Amen? We do so much for our children and those who are in, in ministry. Um, we have spiritual children, um, not that they're kids, but they're just, they're under our wings they're in our circumference of influence and teaching and we take people on to mentor them and we love them like our children amen and so we we want to um just lift you up this morning and and pray that god will bless wonderful mothers today and every day and all that you do for your children, your families, and your community, um, for those that you are are um, mentoring and helping um, and ministering to. Amen. And we just want to say, Amen. God bless you for everything that you do, for who you are, and the wonderful, wonderful um, teacher that you are. Amen. Claim it, receive it Thank in the name God. of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Um, the Lord is saying serve. So I just wanted to read Joshua 24 and 15 to you because the Lord is just still, this is not necessarily keeping with Mother's Day per se, but I just need to, to share this with you real quick and then I'm going to turn service back over to Pastor James. Um, we are really in a time of decision. And although those of us who are on the line um, have either received Christ or we are desiring to have a stronger relationship with Christ, or we're just here in fellowship one with another, it is really a time of decision. And I truly believe that the Lord is telling us to get prepared to um, go out and share the word of God with others. And you might go, ooh, I don't know if I could do that. But <laughs> we are an equipping ministry, amen. And, and the word of God says oh, we are epistles that are read by men. So people will first see it in our walk, how we walk, how we live our lives, how we... Um, act towards other people, how we um, 
receive and respond to other people. Amen. Because we show the fruit, you know, you know, there's an old adage that says the fruit doesn't fall far from the tree. So Jesus told his disciples, when you see me, you see the father. So when you see, when people see you, they should be able to see Jesus. When people see us, they should be able to see Jesus. Amen. 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 So I want to read to you uh, Joshua, the 24th chapter and the 14th and 15th verses. It says, Now therefore fear the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in truth, and put away the gods which your fathers served on the other side of the flood and in Egypt, and serve ye the Lord. 15 says, And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom ye will serve whether the gods which your father served that were on the other side of the flood or the gods of the Amorites in whose land ye dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Amen. Amen. Can we all agree and say, we will serve the Lord. Can everybody say it with me? We will serve the Lord. Hallelujah. So I just, hallelujah. hallelujah. So, so this is a day of decision. And I just want to encourage you all to be that light for Christ, to be that light and shine it to others, to be that surrogate parent and take, you know, there are hurting people in this world. And we mothers know what that's like to take our children when they're hurting, they bang their knee or they fall down or you know, and, and we kind of, we embrace them and we love on them and you tell them it's going to be okay because it will be, the pain will go away. Amen. And it, it makes it a lot better when we embrace our children and we hug on them and love on them. And they give that, they get that reassurance from us that it is going to be okay. We put a little ice on it, make it comfortable <laughs> and uh, put a band aid on there until it heals, right? So I just want to encourage you, when given the opportunity to embrace someone, embrace them with the love of Christ, amen? And be that surrogate parent that they need, that that um, encourager that they need to reassure them, amen? God bless you. Have a wonderful Mother's Day, and I'm going to turn this back over to Pastor James. Amen. 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 I'm going to just sit back for a moment and just open the airways. And you see, I truly believe that the gospel of Christ is for all of us. Amen. It is not just for certain people. It's not just for the pastors. It's not just for the lay. It's not just for those that uh, are afflicted with addiction. Amen. It's not just for those single parents. Amen. It's not just for those single uh, men, single women. It's not just for the grandparents who are left to raise their children oftentimes. It's not for the employed or the unemployed. Amen. It is for all mankind, for the word God, the word of God declares that every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess Jesus is Lord. Hallelujah. And so if he says every knee, every tongue, that means there's a whole lot of people that he's talking about. Amen. There's a whole lot of individuals that he wants to equip to help set the captives free. Amen. So that means my job is to edify you and to encourage you. But I want to encourage you by telling you my job is really to partner with you and to help launch you into what God has called you to do. Amen. Not just you help me build what God has given me. Amen. But my job is to help build what God has invested in you. Amen. So without any further ado, I want to open the phone lines. And for those of you who are watching via social media, uh, you may not be aware, but during these times when we are not uh, able to meet one to another, 
doing social distancing, amen, um, the only person that's in this room with me now would be my lovely, lovely wife, uh, Sister Kirsten, but we are more than six or eight feet away. So we are observing social distancing, just like many other people around the world. But I want you to be aware that we've connected our services and the ability for people to listen to the word of God and to fellowship one to another via their cell phones. So I pray today that those of you watching via social media will be able to hear those individuals as they speak out and as they chime out and as they shout hallelujah unto the Lord. Um, and, and I pray that we have no technical difficulties today, bless the Lord, that everything comes out clear. But I want to open the airways up and give uh, a few of you an opportunity, amen, to just bless the Lord in whatever way he puts it upon your heart. I want you to start off by giving us a wonderful, memorable experience about your mother. Uh, and then you might lead into, if you are a mother, it might lead you into a testimony or an experience that you've had as a mother. Amen. So I want to open the airways and I don't want us all to jump in at one time. So I'm going to just uh, randomly uh, call on some people. Uh, and also during this time, your testimony may have nothing to do whatsoever with Mother's Day, and that's okay too. Amen? So to God be the glory. I want to start off, there's a sister that I have been in fellowship with, and I'm so excited to partner with her simply because if you look on the surface of things, the enemy would try to tell her that, well, you should be at the bottom of the pile, amen. But in recent uh, times, I've been able to fellowship with her. She's been such an encouragement to me, and uh, I want to give her an opportunity because I believe on last Sunday, she came in a little bit distraught, a little bit down. But by the time, hallelujah, service was ending, I believe she was jumping and shouting. She couldn't wait to go hit the road uh, to tell them about the goodness of Jesus Christ. So is Sister Angela on the line with us? If so, uh, bless the Lord for you. Speak loudly so the, those that are listening can hear you uh, give a shout out to the Lord. Yeah, I'm here. Um, I just want to say, you know, like, I've been, um, you know, working in recovery and all that in the program. I am a recovering addict. And, uh, you know, I've just been looking for a church since I got out of jail and all that to a church to one that's not going to judge me, one where I feel welcome and, you know, where I can share my experience, strength, and hope with other people. And, you know, I got that when I attended this last Sunday, and I just, I'm really thankful for all of you and for the church and the ministry, and I just want to, I mean, if any of you out there are struggling, like, it doesn't even have to be addiction, you know, we've all made mistakes, and I always go back to favorite parables in the Bible is the prodigal son, um, and, you know, he just... For those of you that know the story, you know, like he just, he had looked himself in the mirror and no matter how many times he washed himself off, he just could not wipe, he could wipe away all the yuckiness, you know, from uh, the pigs and, you know, doing all that stuff. And, you know, it just, that was me at one point, but now I realize that God can wash all that away. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that he has a spot prepared for me. So I'm yeah. not ready to dig into it and just to run it as far as I can and help whoever I can. Hey. Amen. Amen. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Do you see what Jesus is doing, people of faith? Jesus is taking those that felt at one time that they should be at the back of the bus, amen, and he's catapulting them to the front of the bus, amen. He's taking them out of their mooky mook, and he's launching them to victory. He's launching them into their destiny. And Sister Angela, I just want to say to God be the glory. I'm so encouraged by you, and I can't wait 
until we get further into this and we get into the prisons and we get into the recovery places and we begin speaking wisdom and hope and life into those that felt at one time because of their journey they were dead or doomed to be dead. So I thank God for you this morning. I thank God for your boldness. I thank God for your encouragement. And I want to encourage you that this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Can someone say hallelujah? hallelujah. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I want to open the airways and uh, I know that I know that an awesome woman of faith is on the line with us by now. Uh, uh, we've had some technical difficulties, but bless the Lord. I pray that God has worked those out. Has Sister Victoria been able to join us on the line as of yet? Yes, yes. Amen. Can the church say amen, sister? Yes, amen. <laughs> you see, God, God will always prevail, church. God will always give us the victory if we just don't give up. Amen. Sister... If you will bless us with a brief testimony, uh, you may uh, share your favorite, most memorable experience with your own mother. You may share something of uh, your experiences as a mother, or you just may bless us in testimony. Uh, we open the airways to you to bless those that are watching, those that are viewing, as well as those that are listening. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. God bless you all. Well, I have to say that my mother told me that out of all the five of her children, she never had to worry about me. She mm. said I was always a good girl and I did everything she ever asked me to do. And she told my children that. It was such a blessing to have your mother Tell your children that you were a good girl when you mm, were growing up. Bless the Lord. A blessing. Such a blessing. Such a blessing. Now, I would like to speak on part of my testimony as a mother. Now, you know, we go through trials and tribulations in life. And sometimes, you know, it beats us up. But I'm going to tell you this. I was married to a man who was in prison for 17 years. Mm. But I still raised my children. I took my children to the prison to see him. Mm. I took $50 and quarters to make sure they ate. And he told me that the best thing I've ever done was to keep in contact with him and to bring the children. Mm. Because the children or what, what, what made him happy. Yes, Lord. And I have to tell you, it wasn't an easy thing. I promise you, I didn't do anything. It was all God. Mm -hmm. I promise you. I promise you. He did it all. He showed yes, me Lord. peace in the midst of the storm. Lord, I got to tell you that now. <laughs> So don't ever think that there's no peace, even when you're going through, because it is. Thank you, Lord. I'm telling you what I know and what I live. Hallelujah. Mm. And you know what? It wasn't a it wasn't a normal marriage because he was away from home. But let me tell you this: in the midst of all of that, my husband told me. I talked to him. Before he died. And he told me, he said, Lynn, remember that you were my choice and I wanted you to have my children. And remember that the trusty is real. Now, no, no one can understand how sweet that is coming from your husband. Mm -hmm. uh, how you the words stuck with me, stuck with me. Stuck with me, I tell you. The best thing he could have ever said to me, his last words. I'm telling you, women of faith on this line, love your husband. Love them. And help them. I know this is Mother's Day, but most 
first of us are mothers. And we are always put to the test. <laughs> Amen. We are always put to the test. Amen. So let me just say, let's pass the test. Pass the test. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Bless the Lord. Bless Amen. the Lord. Give God a hand praise right where you sit, right where you stand. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sister Victoria said, let's pass the test. I don't know what you've come to do, but I've come to serve the Lord and to praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, I, I tell you, I love the fact that when we first started this ministry out years ago, under the name Keep It Real Worldwide Ministries. We always used to tell folks, listen, I'm not saying God's taking this little bitty church around the world, but what I wanna teach you is wherever God sends you around the world, you keep it real, amen? And so I'm so blessed to be around some of the realest individuals out there. And I thank God for your testimonies. I thank God because um, God is just so real. And he's given us such a privilege. I want to open the airways. Do we have any of the children listening? Because, you know, a lot of times we forget those small children that, that sit amongst us. Amen. Uh, but we want to give honor to whom honor is due. Bless the Lord. Do we have any of our children on the line participating in church? Now, listen, the rumor and the thought and the reputation is children will always sleep in. Children won't wake up in the morning. Children will do this. Children will do that. But when service starts, and you have just one child on the line, somebody needs to shout hallelujah, hallelujah. especially in this trying time. Hallelujah. There's so many things pulling on our children. Amen. But do we have a child or two on the line that would just share a brief testimony on this wonderful Mother's Day? Uh, do we have any of the children on the line? The airways are open for you to be a blessing to the people of God. Going once, <laughs> going twice. Hi. Say your name again, I'm sweetie. Twice. Your your name is Caitlin. Oh, bless the Lord, Sister Caitlin. Good morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, well, Sonny Renee even threw in her daddy. Bless the Lord. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Can somebody say bless the children? Bless the children. Do, do we have any other children on the line? Can we get one more to just shout out and say good morning, hello, or thank you, mama, or do something. Is there another child on the line? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. What's your name, young man? Michael Little. Good morning, brother Michael. Thank you. Well, amen. As we got it right from Brother Michael, happy Mother's Day. He didn't just limit it to his own, but uh, he wanted to be gracious and share his greetings with all of the mothers. Amen. Thank you, Brother Michael. Thank you, Sister Caitlin. Thank you, Sister Sonny Renee. We bless God for you. We thank God for you. And this yeah. is the day that the Lord has made. And I pray that each of you Give God praise and thanks throughout your life that one day as you become parents, your parents will teach you the way to go so that when you grow old, you shall not depart from it. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I, I'm so excited about not being church as usual because, you know, in my past, 
you know, I just needed people to get their hands on me and shake me up because I didn't think like the rest of you holy folks. I didn't act like the rest of you people that got it all together and you live in that holy life. You see, it took me a certain journey and a path to get where I am. And that's why I have such a passion to partner with those of you that have had a journey of whatever the journey may be. Whatever God has allowed you to come through, I want you to know this day that you can make it up in your mind that it doesn't matter where you've come from. It doesn't matter what you've gone through. Amen. And like uh, Sister Angela said, you know, like the prodigal son, it doesn't matter if you woke up one day and said, give me all of my stuff. God is looking for that day that you come to yourself. Amen. Hallelujah. I want to... Um, be brief before you this morning. Uh, I want to open the airways for a few more testimonies, but I want to get kind of started here, if I may. This is one of those unique days, amen, that mothers make time in their day for the Lord. Bless God for that. But at the end of the day, most of us don't eat if it's not for mama. Some of us can't, can't, we don't have much to look forward to if it's not for mama, amen. So some of you mothers still have uh, the task of uh, laundry and, and, and cooking and cleaning up after folks. This is your day. So I don't want to be, uh, be here before you too long. I want to be brief in this message, but I pray that it is effective for someone. And so I'm going to ask, uh, is Sister Valerie on the line with us this morning? Amen. Uh, she might be experiencing some technical difficulties. Uh, I'm looking at our line here, um, and some folks are on Facebook watching live, but they're not able to call in. Um, so I'm not sure which of you that are on Facebook have the ability to dial area code 515-606-5430. That's 515-606-5430 and enter the access code 330-834-POUND, amen, and so that you can chime in on this service and that we can celebrate with you, amen. As I began to prepare myself for this week, I had to reflect a lot on my upbringing. Because you see, I had one of those childhoods where things were not rosy all the time. Things were not perfect all the time. Amen. Um, I, I had a strange view of things growing up because my mother loved me. She loved me a lot. I was surrounded by sisters who loved me who are now mothers in their own right. But you see, coming up, there were things going on in my family that caused me to be angry about certain things. And I don't know about you, but there were times when I would even denounce the parents that God had <laughs> assigned me to, amen. I don't know about you if you've ever said, you ain't my mama, or I wish you weren't my mama. You ain't my daddy. Oh, I wish you weren't my daddy. Well, that was me. And as I prepared for this week, um, I, I asked in prayer, I asked the Lord, well, what should we talk about? What should we focus on on this Mother's Day service? And bless the Lord, it came to me save the best for last. <laughs> you see, as I look in the Bible and I search the word of God and I look for leadership and guidance, I try to always get something from the word of God. Now, Father God, before we open up your word, I'm asking in the name of Jesus by way of the Holy Spirit that you take me, O God, and remove me out of the way. I'm giving you total permission, Heavenly Father, to take total control of my vessel, my mind, my thoughts, my words, my heart. And I'm asking right now, oh God, that you take your word 
and you take just one nugget of this word, I may not be able to get it all today. I may not be able to apply it all into my personal life today. But I'm asking that you bless me and your listeners today, people of great faith, people that are struggling in their faith, people that might not even know which way they want to go. Hallelujah. People that have heard of the name of Jesus, but they're still in a confused state. Hallelujah. They're still not quite sure whom this day they're going to serve. They might not have a good example at home. They might see a lot of church folk, but a lot of hypocrites, a lot of people judging them. Hallelujah. This day, oh God, I ask that you set your captives free, oh God. I ask that you saturate us with your anointing, oh God. I ask that you give us peace that passes all understanding. Hallelujah. And Father God, this morning, just take one nugget of your word, just one small nugget plant it in the pit of our souls, that it take root, Heavenly Father, and it begin to manifest itself through our earthly vessels, that, oh God, as you send us out, it won't be us that they see, but they'll see the renewed spirit of Christ in us, that they shall turn from their ways and to begin to seek your face. Oh God, this day we give you the glory. Hallelujah, Father God, we give you the honor. For God will live and for God will die. Thank you, O oh God. Thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Amen. So if I had to give, uh, if I had to give a, a, a title to today's message, it would be "Save the Best for Last." Now we're going to open the airways and allow more of you to give a, a testimony of your motherly experiences or your experiences with your mother. And again, we won't be long before you today, amen. But I believe God has positioned people together this morning for a reason and for such a time as this, to God be the glory. And so I wanna make sure it might be something that some of you have inside of you that God wants to release out of you. See, God is saying, saving the best for last in you. See, sometimes he's got to hide you away, amen, so that he can prepare you, hallelujah, for such a time as this. Your gifts will make room for you, hallelujah. So whatever you've gone through, maybe you're like me and you've denounced the parents that God gave you. Maybe you're like me and you've had a hard time just looking at the examples before you. Or maybe like me, sometimes you've been, it's been difficult for you to be that living example to your own children, amen. But I wanna encourage you today that God has intentionally and deliberately Save the best for last. See, those that have gone first, the Bible says he'll cause those things that are last, what? To be, come on now, get out from the back of the bus and come on to the front of the bus. I don't have work for you in the back. I've got work for you to do up front. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, oh my God. Hallelujah, thank you, Lord. So as I was preparing for today, my whole thing was, Lord, look at who you've drawn together. Look at the type of people that you've gotten together. And so recently, uh, as a challenge of my dear friend, uh, a brother in Christ, uh, one of my attorneys, Eric King in Columbus, Ohio, and that is not to promote him because God promotes him. Amen. But I have to give honor where honor is due. And he would oftentimes challenge me uh, on the things that were right in front of me. Amen. And I want to thank God for that. Amen. Because sometimes it doesn't matter. You might think you see people with titles and degrees. Amen. And they may act like they've got it all together, but you don't know what what their struggles are. Amen. You don't know how they struggle throughout their day, what it takes for them to open their eyes. And when it comes to mothers, as I search the word of God in the King James Version, there the word mother comes up 189 times. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. And um, the there are 86 
times that it comes up in the New Testament. So, and I think I misquoted, I think it's 159 in the Old Testament and bless the Lord, 86 times in the New Testament. Now, when I look at that, mothers, fathers, children, I say, now, what's the significance of that? And it hit me just like a light bulb came on. I remember times when I thought my mother, my grandmother, they were nagging me. In my ear, it would sound something like, nyang, 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 nyang. And sometimes I want to just say, can you be quiet? But they weren't nagging me. What they were doing is they were downloading wisdom in me. Can somebody say, amen, bless the Lord. You see, sometimes God, hallelujah, sometimes God has got to repeat himself over and over and over again because he already knows that he's saving the best in you for last, amen? He's going to allow all of those other folks that thought they were special, that thought they were doing something to come out ahead of you. But as I'm looking into his word and as I'm searching his word and I'm saying, my God, that's an awful lot of times for the word mother. Now, when we look at our life, and we look at school, most of you children that spoke this morning, you might be able to relate. There are words that you have to memorize to take a test, but there are some words that have special meaning, amen? There are some words that surpass just the word by itself. And that word that I wanna share with you today is that word that we relate to as mother. When I think about mother, there are so many things that come to my mind. I think, first of all, an overcomer. I think about my own mother, the things that she had to do to press through. My mother would often say, listen, child, I cannot have you going out in the streets fighting. I love to fight when I was growing up. I love to fight. It was something about that aggressiveness and getting out that aggression. I would walk up to people that were, bless the Lord, in a fist fight, and I would intervene and say, hey, hold on. He can't handle it. Let me get a little of that. But my mother would say, baby, I can't have you going out and getting in fights. Because if you do, they're going to judge me for that. And it took me years to realize that what we do as children, oftentimes our mother takes the blame for it. What we do in our own mucky muck, our mothers have to take the brunt of it for us. A lot of times, hallelujah, when I look in the Bible and I say, well, Lord, Look at some of the great mothers, Moses, Jacobi, great woman, great, great woman. When I read the story of Naomi and Ruth, oh my God, what, what an example, what an example. But I see something more. When I look at people like Lisa Baldwin, who has to wake up every single day with the weight of the world on her shoulders. Oh, she does a great job smiling. And I tease her all the time and I say, I know you've intercepted my stimulus check. Please release it. And I know she has it. So any of you who know her, bless the Lord. Now I normally don't give everybody's whole name, especially when we're out here on social media. But I have to share hers because she might be holding something that I desperately need. Amen. So I watch her as how she goes through her day. I watch her as she sees her family dealing with a horrific episode. And I watch her how when I show up at her house, she'll say, hey, pastor, how are you? And oftentimes in my spirit, I'll sit back and I'll say, my God. What an example. I mean, do any of you know of somebody that even when the enemy told them they couldn't do it, they still stuck their shoulders back, rolled their head a little bit, and said, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So Sister Lisa encourages me. I dare not even try to jump in the shoes of my dear sister in Christ, Valerie. 
Oh my God. Oh my God. See, God is saving the best for last. In the text that I want to share with you today, I want to talk to you from when Jesus was on his way out. One of the last things that he did is he set order for the importance of a mother. Oh my God. I hope somebody's listening today. You see, a lot of times you may have made mistakes, mothers or fathers, children. You may have done some things that did not bring glory. You may have made some decisions that you know later you're going to regret. You may have said some things. I wish I had a witness on this line this morning. Can somebody just say, I have not been the perfect parent? Oh, my soul. But God is calling me right out of where I am. Hallelujah. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. You see, the devil wants some of our mothers today to be so distraught because of some of the decisions or lifestyle choices that they may have made. It's true enough you did it. It's true enough you acted that way. It's true enough that maybe you favored one child over another. But I want to tell you today, what an example God has created in you. I want to share with you today that he has saved the best in you for last because it took all of this creation it took all of these examples to get you to realize that even when you've made mistakes god is still yet present anyhow hallelujah so as i search this i look at people like nicole oh my word now if nicole were able to call in in fact if she's listening, I'm going to challenge her to call that 515-606-5430 and just say hello to the people of faith. You're talking about somebody that was tore up from the floor up, and now she has her children praising God, praying every day. They're not perfect, but who are we? Hallelujah. See, God is, he's creating and he's searching for a new remnant. He's lifting you up from the places that nobody else believed in you. He called you out of your mother's womb for such a time as this. He's created a dynasty in you. Hallelujah. So when I think about the goodness of the Lord, when I think about many of the women of faith that God has put in my life, I have to reflect upon things and I have to look at it differently. And as I look at the word of God and I come into the book of John and I'm searching his word in the 19th chapter, as we see Jesus coming down to the end of the rainbow, as we see Jesus, it's almost done. He came on this earth to die that we might be saved. And yet he waited until the very end. He saved the best for last. We all know when he said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. He was talking about me, amen. Maybe he was talking to some of you. But you see, God wants to set order, and a lot of times the examples are right before our eyes. A lot of times people of faith, they desire to do well, but sometimes the examples that we've had walk out before us have left us a little bit as the underdog. You see, when I think about mothers and I look in the word of God and in the New Testament, in the King James Version, 159 times he talks about mother, 86 in the Old Testament. I have to ask, why do you give so much focus on the word mother? And it's because that word mother has such a complete history and journey, if we'll just follow. You see, as Sister Kirsten spoke earlier, when our babies get hurt, I don't care how much daddy spoil that baby. I don't care how much daddy does for that child. When that child goes down and gets a scrape or a bruise, 
the first thing oftentimes that comes into that baby's heart is mama, mama. Now that same child may not have listened to mama when that mama said, listen, baby, I need that bedroom clean. Or that child looked at that mother go off into the streets and not do what she's supposed to do, not be the type of mother that they desired in their own heart. If they lined themselves up with their friends, sometimes they may have even been ashamed to say, that's my mama right there. But I want to tell you today, and I pray I'm speaking hope into somebody right now. You see, even as a mother, you may have been lost. You may have even lost your children. But hallelujah, he wants to take and save the best for last. He wants to allow some people to go through some things so horrific today. That when it's all said and done, he's going to catapult you to the front to say, but God. Yes, I did those things. Yes, I struggled in those areas. But when it's all said and done, children of all ages, all they want to do in their heart is say, hi, mama. Mama, I'm hurting. And when I look at that, I say, my God, how is it that even mothers that are toe up from the floor up, a child can be away from their mother for years and years and years. But there's still a yearning desire to just experience what is it like to be around that woman? What is it like? And I want to tell you, children, you don't get to choose your mama. God does that. But I want you to begin to look at what God sees when he sees a mama. He sees hope. He sees strength. He sees endurance. He sees faith. He sees love. The Bible says faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. You see, mamas have a way of embracing love. When we go out and do something bonehead stupid, I mean, I've done some stuff so bonehead, it gives an extra bone to the head that has an extra head. I've done some bonehead stupid stuff. I've done some stuff so bonehead that I sometimes even hope many of the people in the church never meet some of those people that witness me, witness me doing those bonehead things. Because boy, they're going to have a story to tell. But you see, even in the midst of when somebody does something half as bonehead as me, it's that mother's love that just says, come on, baby. I'm disappointed in what you've done. But mama loves you. And it's something about that word mother that it invokes fear sometimes. You know, when you do something crazy and they go, oh, my God. When my mama hear what I done done, oh, Lord. But then there's also a comforting part. When all else fails and when everybody else and stop fat mouthing, when everything else settles, it's going to be mama there. It's going to be mama and oftentimes standing all by herself. So any men that are listening right now, I want you to show more gratitude to your mama. I want you to value your mama. Pick up your phone and say, hi, mama. Don't wait until you get in trouble and then want to say, mama. There was a song my mother used to sing. Now, I may not be able to sing it well, but she used to say, mama said there'll be days like this. There'll be days like this. My mama said, and that stuck with me. When I was in my deepest hours, a lot of times it'd be the words that my mother would say. And so as I approach the word of God, I pray that it's someone's being ministered to this morning. Wherever you are right now, Mother's Day is more than just another free day. Mother's Day 
is a day that we can reflect upon the times, those low times in our life when we had nobody else. And my heart goes out to those of you that God has transitioned your mother's own and they're no longer here with you. But I want to challenge you to search out your life and to allow God to show you other mother figures that have the spirit of Christ, had they embody wisdom, that they can speak hope, life, and faith right into you. Oh my God, when I think of Mother's Day, all I can do is smile. Number one, I know I'm going to eat real good on that day. <laughs> but number two, I can look back and think how special it is. I want to just turn to the book of John, and I'm coming to come from the 19th chapter. And I pray that this word really resonates with you. Because as I look throughout the gospel, I look for examples. God, what, what's so important to you? What is it about me that's important to you? And this just spoke out to me. And I want to share it with you today. When Jesus is coming to the end, the end of all ends as we understood it, it had already been prophesied. It had already been told. We already knew in the story, in the text, that shortly hereafter, uh, he would take his last breath. But you see, oftentimes in our life, God allows things to come in our way. God allows a certain journey to be experienced. I, I pray someone say, bless the Lord. You see, but it's oftentimes right when things get their worst. Right before we feel like giving up, right before we want to quit and turn in and throw in the towel. See, it's not just pro boxers that get tired in the middle of a heavyweight championship fight and they get off the bench and they come back in round after round and they keep getting pummeled, left hook, right cross, uppercut, left jab, right jab, uppercut. Jab to the kidneys, punch to the rib cage, uppercut, uppercut. And sometimes the blows come at them so fast and so hard, like when we most of us may have remembered hearing of Mike Tyson, one of the hardest punches to ever enter into a boxing ring. Sometimes the punches would come so fast and come so hard that his opponents would say, I never knew what hit me. The little shortcake half pint ain't no bigger than this. Many of our mothers, they have to stand in the fight with us. They have to stand and keep coming off that stool round after round after round. Husbands are deserting them, abandoning them, not helping with the children, not even coming home, truth be told. Yet mothers have to be there to bake the cake, make the pies, clean the bathroom, make the beds. Take care of the husbands, take care of our wounds, mend us, and oftentimes nobody even notices the scrapes that might be all on their face. Mothers have to constantly get up when everybody else is laying down. It's like that heavyweight fighter, that heavyweight guy that you might be going through a court battle this morning, but don't get it twisted, shortcake. If there's a woman around, I promise you, she's carrying that brunt much more than you ever will. I promise you, God has given women such a thing, such a nature. I remember being challenged by a man once, and he said, oh, pastor, you think more of a, like a woman than a woman think like a woman. I just said, bless the Lord. <laughs> because you see, the mindset of, of that mother that mindset of that mother says, I'm not thinking about me. I'm not worried about me. God is going to take care of me if everybody else abandons me. You see, and some of us men know, it just kills me. And I hope I don't run every man on the line off. 
But when you make a baby, you got to pay for the baby. And so often I hear men saying, well, they, they want to hit a brother. They want to tax a brother for child support. Some men don't even go and get a job because they don't want the woman to get no money. But the woman has to stay there and bear with it. When there's nothing to eat, she's got to make a way. My God, you see, Jesus focused on that word mother because there's so much in that title. Jesus is not saying because you're called mother, you're perfect. Jesus is not saying that you're not going to go to the left when you know you're supposed to go to the right. I look at Sister Monica struggling in her health, trying to help her family build and, and get a business off the ground. Daddy just is, daddy just is soft as mush sometimes. I thought I was soft on my daughter. I thought I spoiled my daughter. But oh my God, those children wind up and don't let them get a bubble or tear in their eye. Don't let the daughter get a tear swell up in her eye. He turned into Winnie the Pooh. The only thing he good for at that moment is to suck down some honey out of a honey jar. And I watch how Sister Monica has so much wisdom swelled up inside of her. And oftentimes she has to sit back and allow others to look like they're taking the lead. And when I'm in her presence, sometimes I can feel her energy. Now, you all know what I'm talking about when you used to go to them clubs. I'm going to say used to, but a few of y'all may have been there last night. <laughs> now, you know the clubs are closed during the COVID-19. But as I've been driving down the street, Y'all don't need the club door to open. You just party right on the outside. Everybody, come on. Hey, that's my song. But I watch how Sister Monica, energy swelled up inside of her, a spirit of faithfulness, obedience. And as I look at her, I say, my God, I know she just want to slap some of them just sometime, just maybe one little one. And I say, my God, how do you go and you see such foolishness right in front of you, yet you have the strength to hold on? See, I could talk about a lot of different women, a lot of different mothers in the Bible. But you see, what an example we had in the mother of Jesus, my God. You see, as we search the Bible through and through, to me, there's one of the greatest examples of how we are to reverence our mother. At the end of the day, not that Jesus did not have love for his father. Don't, don't get that twisted. But there's something special about that woman. There's something endearing that when you are close to your wit's end, Somehow, you all of a sudden know what's most important to you. And I don't know about all of you, but I know for me, when I couldn't turn to anybody else, when I couldn't find encouragement in nobody else, I could always say, hey, mama, <laughs> hey, mama. And she'd always be there to the best of her ability. She wasn't perfect, y'all. But if I needed a friend, and when she got some things right in her life, our relationship became so great later. So for you mothers that have maybe messed some things up, maybe haven't been who you are called to be, don't give up because God is setting the stage. What an example. He's saving the best for last in you. My God. 
Can somebody say hallelujah? Hallelujah. hallelujah. In this text, in verse 25, now there stood by the cross of Jesus, his mother, and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Cleophas, and Mary Magdalene. Now I can hear my wife making sure that I give clear instructions, so I want to make sure that I repeat it, that we're coming from the book of John, the 19th chapter and the 21st verse. Now, do you see what just happened here, church? Do you see? Men, don't get it twisted. You might be great, but the Bible says, he that findeth a wife findeth a good thing. Amen. We need to value what God puts in our women. In the midst of my sermon, my wife going to interrupt me. <clears throat> <clears throat> Hold on, shortcake. Did you tell them what book you're in? <laughs> but my job is to be obedient and to learn to recognize the good things that God has put in front of me. Amen. So I want to say I'm coming from the book of John, the 19th chapter. Now I'm going to carry on with the verse 26. It says, when Jesus therefore saw his mother. <laughs> I want to stop right there for just a minute. You ever been so angry in your life? Nowadays, all the young people, their favorite word is bruh. You upset him? No, bro. No, bro. I was talking to a brother one day, and I think he was upset with me. And instead of saying, hey, pastor, I, I declare I heard him say, bro. Have you ever been so angry that you can't control yourself, but all it takes is that one person to show up, and it'll stop you in your tracks? When mama shows up and says, you better sit yourself down. I don't care how angry you have been. There's something inside of you that has to take notice. So as I'm looking and I'm saying, Jesus, why are you putting the word mother in the King James Version so often? How many scriptures do you need to show me where you give reverence and honor and acknowledgement to mother? Why is it that it's 159 in the old and 86 in the new? That's a whole lot of mother. You see, he has to repeat a thing over and over and over until we can get it in our spirit. Amen. You see, he wants us to be able to recognize things that are most important. I teach the young men, if I were to ask Sonny Renee, my eight-year-old daughter, what's the first role and responsibility of a young man? Matter of fact, I'm going to put it to the test. Sonny Renee, are you on the line with us this morning? Amen. They may have had technical difficulties, or they might be online and not able to, to hear, but she would say a man's first role and responsibility is to secure the women and children. And people oftentimes never knew or understood where I got that from. I got it from the word of God. That's your first role and responsibility. In other words, stop thinking about all the other things that the life, your life has for you. Sit back and just focus on the things that are most important and watch what Jesus does. He could be focused on himself. He is on his way out. He's got a whole lot of other things that he could be focused and worried about. And look in the midst of the storm. He stops everything that's going on about him. When he saw his mother, when he took notice of who was yet present in the midst of his storm. 
there was his mother and the disciples standing by whom he loved. You see, it's not that Christ doesn't think highly of a whole lot of us, but there are certain people, there are certain roles, there are certain titles that supersede a lot of other stuff. Amen? And so you mothers, you are highly favored. You are thought of when the, when the storm is raging. Your name, your presence causes such a peace to come over Jesus. You see, when it's all but over, when it's all but said and done, Jesus, it says here, who was there present with him? He said unto his mother, woman, behold thy son. Now, I want you to get this. Please get this. Jesus is on his way out. He's not going to be with them much longer, not at this hour. He knew that the time had come that he had to put the weight of the world on his back. The Bible says that he suffered that none be lost. This was a part of his process. He understands women, men, children, that your life, much like his, is going to be a journey. But even at the end of the journey, you see, he saves the best for last in you. When all hope is gone, well, my education, I didn't finish junior high school. I didn't graduate high school. I can't read too well. Sometimes my brain don't think too well. I can't see too well. Oh, I have a limp in my leg. I can't move as fast as you move. It doesn't matter what you go through. Your substance is in who God has made you to be. Amen. That when you show up on the scene, hallelujah, as soon as you show up, there's a peace that passes all understanding. My God. I pray that this message reaches somebody that may find themselves in a prison cell today. Your mother ain't gave up on you. And so what if your mother went a little to the left? So have you. But God is saving the best for last. The Bible says that we're all called into the ministry of reconciliation. That means there's a work to do. That means there's a work that you have to do. He's called you to such a time as this. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He says, woman, behold thy son. In verse 27 in the book of John, it says, then said he to the disciple, in the midst of his storm. Y'all, he about to go out. He's about to take his last breath. All of the prophecy is about to manifest. And instead of letting his focus be on all the things that are important, he sets order at the end. He says, woman, behold thy son. In other words, you're not alone. The Bible tells us that he sends a comforter, a Holy Spirit that'll lead, guide, and direct you. When you come out of yourself and when you like the prodigal son, as, as Sister Angela said, and when you wake up and you realize who God has really called you to be, he will allow you to quiet that storm in you. He will allow you to get things right. He will allow you to set order. When I go and visit folks' homes, a lot of times the first place I go is the bathroom. You can tell a lot about a person by their bathroom, amen? amen? But here's the thing Jesus wants us to realize. He sees our bathrooms, but what he's really focused on is that end result of that bathroom becoming in order. See, it takes a lot for us to have a not-so-clean house. Can somebody say amen to that? 
It takes a lot of stuff going on within us. But God doesn't care about that per se. What he cares about is when you wake up and you come to yourself and you realize how much he's invested in you. When you realize, just like in this story, God at the end, when you just feel like giving up, when you want to throw in the towel, when you want to say, oh, hope is gone, everybody else is esteeming others higher than me. Everybody else is forgetting about me. Nobody's even remembering my name. I can't even feel the presence of God. I need an answer today. Jesus wants you to see in this text a lot of times he'll wait until the last second. A lot of times he'll wait until you feel like giving up, mother. A lot of times he'll allow people to go through things and to step on you and to cross you and to wrong you, to leave you, to abandon you, to desert you. Because he's going to do something for you. And my prayer this morning, is that when we get off this line and somebody says to you, well, what was service about today? You can say, mm, Jesus saved the best in me for last. You see, God wants to set order today. He wants to set order in you today. And right when he could have talked about anything, in verse 27, Jesus then said he to the disciple, behold thy mother. And from that hour, that disciple took her unto his own home. After this, Jesus, knowing that all things were now accomplished. My God. Do you see how sometimes if your life has been out of whack, if your life has been a big mucky muck, God knows that. But right before it's over. He desires to set order in you. He desires to set order in me. He desires to right the wrongs. As we begin to open our new building, my prayer is that Sister Nicole will be able to be with us and many others. That when you hear the testimony of some of the women of faith, that have had to endure the storm and thought that they were abandoned and they feel alone, they feel the weight of the world. They try to broaden their shoulders. God is sending you some help. And I wanna speak that into you right now. He says, mother, he's, listen, he says, woman, behold thy son. You see, right at the end, right at the end, before he said it's accomplished, he said order. If you've been feeling abandoned, if you've been feeling alone, if you've been feeling that you've done something so horrific that you're ashamed and you're walking in that guilt and shame, just remind the devil he is a liar. And I want you to leave today knowing that no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Yes, he may let you go through a process. Yes, he may wait until you're on that cross. But he's going to send you a help. And if we look to the hills from which cometh our help, the Bible says our help cometh from the Lord. Amen. Amen. So mothers, be encouraged today because in verse 28, it says, after this, and I'm going to leave you with this. The Bible says, after this, <laughs> I pray you get this, after this, you see, God is going to set order before anything else takes place. So what's going on in your life, mother, that hasn't been right? Who's given up on your mother that made you want to give up on yourself? I say hogwash. <laughs> Don't get it twisted, shortcake. It ain't over until it's over. And God is never going to leave you by yourself. 
He sent you a comforter. He sent you the Holy Spirit. He'll make all things known to your remembrance by way of the Holy Spirit. Those things that you were taught as a child, Maybe you haven't always made the right choices. Maybe you don't find yourself where you believe you should be today. Maybe you've actually done something that, if truth be told, you should be judged a whole lot harsher than you have been. None of that matters. I want to partner with you today. I want to partner with you because Jesus has saved the best in you for last. There's so much that God has invested in you. Maybe you're listening now for the first time. Maybe you've been coming and supporting for years, but there's still some things that you need to get right. Although we're not together, I wanna to open the altar right where you sit, right where you stand right now. And I wanna give you an opportunity, mother, child, husband, friend, I want you to get, get your mind right. I want you to see Jesus just about to take his last breath. And right before he does, he sets order. God is sending you a help right now. God hasn't forgotten about you. Never has and never will. But what he wants to do is set you in a place where there's order in your life. If you believe God is calling you to do a work at such a time as this, I want to encourage you to reach out to me, Pastor Sonny James at gmail.com. That's S O N N Y J A M E S, Pastor Sonny James at gmail.com. Or call me, I don't care if the whole world hears this cell phone number, my lines are open to compel the lost to come. You can call me directly at area code 513-487-8843. And as we launch our new brand of Kingdom Builder Ministries, I want to partner with you and to give you an opportunity to come in from the storm and to have covering and to set order within what God has birthed into you. And I want to be your covering and provide a covering for you, that you're not just out there all by yourself. Come into the fold. Let God set order. Amen. Those of you that are listening right now, if you don't have a church home, I extend an open invitation. And right now at the altar, right where you sit, right where you stand, I want us all to just pray this prayer together. Father God, it's in the name of Jesus that I come before you. Search my heart, O oh Lord. Take out of me, O oh God, the things that I have doubted, the things that cause me to have lack of faith. Sometimes I've forgotten that you're right there by my side. Sometimes I look at my problems instead of looking to the hills from which cometh my help. Because if I just trust in you, O oh God, I know that my help cometh from the Lord. So right now, I, I may have known you, Jesus, for a number of years. But I may have walked away. Maybe I go to church, but maybe my faith has wavered. Maybe I've doubted when I didn't need to. So right now, Jesus, I accept you into my heart as my Lord and Savior. I come right now, Father God, thanking you in advance for all that you predestined for me. I ask right now that you quiet the storm. Peace be still. Your word declares whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. I thank you, Lord God, for placing me this hour and setting order in my footsteps, setting order in my mind, setting order, Father God, in my home. And I thank you for never leaving me nor forsaking me. I repent of my sins. I acknowledge you as Lord and Savior. 
I thank you for dying on the cross that I might have life and that life more abundantly. I thank you for a time as this to celebrate Mother's Day. But oh God, you're speaking to more than just the mothers. You're setting order in all of us that we can be more effective, oh God, for such a time as this, for the work at hand. You've called us, Father. Now launch us into our destiny that you be glorified. Thank you for receiving me. Thank you for blessing me. And oh God, if you should call me home, those that repent and call on the name of Jesus and believe in your heart that he died on the cross for you. Then when that day should come, you can go like Jesus, not worrying about yourself because you shall be saved. And then you can focus, all of us can focus on the work at hand and we can help set order in the lives of those around us. I thank you, oh God, for this day. I thank you for just blessing me in your word. I thank you for encouraging me. It is in Jesus' name that I pray. Amen. Somebody say hallelujah. 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 I want to open the airways uh, again just for a second. There might be one or two before Sister Michelle blesses us with our benediction. There might be someone that the Lord has blessed you in such a way, and maybe we don't even understand it. I want to open the airways, and I don't want to be labor long. I know many of you mothers still have a work at hand to do in your homes, <laughs> but I don't want to put that work ahead of the work of the Lord. So I want to open the airways if there's anyone that the Lord has spoken to this morning. I want to give you an opportunity to just share if there was something on your heart in terms of what God has done for you with your own mother or done with you with your own children. I want to give you an opportunity. Or if you've confessed for Christ for the very first time in your life, or if you've backslidden, and now you're ready to allow him to set the order. I want to open the airways and give you an opportunity right now to just speak briefly and share. Is there one on the line? I know those of you that are watching via social media may not be able to speak. All right, speak your name so that we can uh, we know who we're talking to. This is Sister Michelle Riddle. Bless the Lord, Sister Michelle. Amen. And um, just say that I'm so thankful that you made it. Mm. She taught me there were two things that really stick with me that she taught me. One was that she was not going to be around, so I have to be strong and I have to seek God for my help. And the other thing she taught me is that she always, and I thought it was a bad thing at first, but she would always say, I can't wait to you grow up and have kids just like you. <laughs> and <laughs> I thought it was bad at first, but as I'm coming to know God more and more, and I see the trifle in this thing. <laughs> I realized that I was like that, and my mind went through a lot. Mm. Mm. So, um, I'm starting to be more patient, which I've never had in my life until I started getting to know God. Um, it's giving me more patience to deal with them because I'm realizing that. If I can turn out the heart that I have, 
now and that there's hope for them. And that my mom is still to me like as long as I just keep looking for my help from God, that anything is possible. Yes. And that I can stand and do anything, even when she's not there. So I thank you for that. And she also made sure that even if she's not there, her sister is. Mm, <laughs> bless the Lord. I'm for her stepping in when my mom couldn't be there. And I love them both. And I just want to thank God for both of them being in my life. Amen. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Thank you so much for that. And I pray someone else other than just myself was blessed by that. So thank you. Would there be another, maybe a first time listener? Would there be someone else who's, maybe you've been listening a long time, but you've never said anything? I want to open the airways that you can speak out. Bless the Lord. Well, you know, there's one thing for sure, too, for certain. I'm not going to allow the rocks to cry out for me. Amen? <laughs> I want to give honor to God for all the many wonderful mother figures that God has brought into my life. And those that maybe I didn't honor the way that I should, but on this broadcast, I want to acknowledge one in particular. Well, I want to acknowledge a few in particular. My granny, Frances Sarah Golden. We used to call her Goldilocks and the Three Bears and Goldilocks and the Three Hippopotamuses. And we'd come up with some crazy names. But she imparted such love and wisdom in all of us. And she was really my first example of a woman of great faith. And I thank God for her. I thank God for the daughter that she birthed, which was my mother, Catherine. We call her Medea. <laughs> and May Ethel Scott. Those were three of the most important women in my life until I met my wife. And I want to thank God for my wife. Sister Kirsten is a wonderful example of what a mother should be made of, how a mother should conduct herself. And it's all embodied by such a spirit of humility. And she can cook good too. <laughs> But I just want to thank God for the wonderful examples that I've had before me. And I want to thank God for each and every one of you that have tuned into this broadcast today. I'm asking you to partner with us as we try our very best not to judge people, but to love them right where they're at. I'm asking that you partner and to bring the ministry that God has blessed you with under order and into the fold with Kingdom Builder Ministries. And as Keep It Real Worldwide Ministries and some of the other ministries that are have been birthed and that God allows us to operate under, we want to bring forth a place where people can come together and worship together, serve together and love together, support one another. So again, if you don't have a church home, please reach out to us and we'll be more than happy to bring the love that maybe you are searching for. Come one, come all. I want to also challenge each of you. We don't beg for money in this ministry, but God is blessing us with such a huge and beautiful edifice. And we have such a, a wonderful opportunity to secure our next church home. And I'm asking that you all become faith partners of this ministry and to help us by being faithful and to go on our fundraising cash app 
and I believe it's the dollar sign followed by launch the kingdom, capital L, lowercase a u n c h, capital T, lowercase h e, capital K, lowercase i n g d o m. And I pray I spelled it right. But please be faithful. Support this ministry as God presses upon your heart, as God blesses you, or as according to your measure of faith. I'm so blessed by Chris and Nick Taylor that hadn't always gone to church, hadn't been a part of a church. They prescribed to the Jewish faith. But oh my gosh, they've been so faithful to this ministry. And the Bible encourages us to give honor to whom honor is due. And to many of the rest of you out there that have become faith partners to this ministry, I thank you personally and I thank God for you. But the work is just now beginning because when we do open our doors back, it won't just be me that you'll see. It'll be all the wonderful able-bodied ministers that God has called out of their mother's womb. And we together are gonna partner and we're going to help set the captives free. I wanna say thank each and every one of you for participating in our service. Please go to our fundraising cash app, Launch the Kingdom, and be a blessing to the kingdom of God by way of this ministry. And remember, you are the absolute best that God has to offer. And don't get it twisted, shortcake. God bless each and every one of you. I thank God for you. I pray that you were encouraged today. I pray that God has spoken to you. I want to, uh, I don't know if she's able to, but I want to open the line for uh, Sister Kirsten if she wanted to have a parting word. Um, I think she's saying no, because she's got to get some cooking going so that we can eat. <laughs> Bless the Lord. But um, I want to open the door for Sister Michelle to give us our benediction. I'm so excited today, you all. I, I feel such a presence of God, a peace come over me. I'm ready. I'm ready to be more faithful. I'm ready to be more of who God has called me to be. Won't you partner with us today? We're looking for faith partners. Doesn't matter whatever level that you can come. Bring your ideas, bring your gifts, bring your talents. There's a room for all of us in the kingdom. And Kingdom Builder Ministries can be home for you and what God has put in you. God bless you. Have a wonderful celebration today, this week, the rest of the month, the rest of the year, and the rest of your life. The benediction. Jude, the 24th and 25th verse. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you fallen before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and ever. Let the church say amen. 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 Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. So I just want to say that that concludes our live service for this Mother's Day. I pray that you all have been blessed. We're concluding this call now and the service. Have a blessed day. And just remember, God is saving the best for last in you. God bless you all. Be encouraged. Stay encouraged. Peace. Love you. Love you too. Love you too. You too.